For the lesson six tutorial, we're going to talk about um, flowing text. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you an example of what we're going to end up with, but I want to go through the steps of actually flowing the text and how text can sometimes come with your templates if you're using templates, OK? So I'm going to switch over here to InDesign and kind of show you this is what we are going to end up creating. And it's um, kind of a menu brochure kind of thing for a restaurant. So we're going to come down. We're going to um, create, add the images, mess with the text some, do some editing. And then we're also going to flow this text to kind of come through here. And then on the back, we're going to just, you know, make a few edits to it. OK, so whenever you um, download your file, I'm going to pull this up and I'll show you what kind of the file is going to look like. So you're going to have inside of the file you download the fonts folder, the food images folder, the text folder, and then the lesson six. OK, so with lesson six, I'll go ahead and open it and I'll kind of show you the difference between what we already have, what we're starting with and then. What is there? So you can see that we're going to have to fill in some of this. I'm going to skip this for one second and then we're going to fill in some of this area down here so you can see it's a lot more empty, but I'm going to close this out first because we're going to try and fix um, one of the problems before we even start. So one of the problems that you're going to notice with when you're using templates is sometimes they'll use fonts that you don't have. A lot of times they will give you the fonts that you need, so they're right here. A lot of times too, they'll give you the images that you need. Not always, but sometimes. So right here is the fonts. And then when you um, open up that font file, you're going to see these documents. With these documents, you simply have to double click on them and come up here to install. And then you let it run through and you can do the next one. There is not an easy way to do all of them. I usually just like select them all and open them all so that I can just click install and then close it as soon as it's done. But this is another way you can just go through one by one. Now this is installing the fonts to your computer, so sometimes it might take a few minutes to actually get into Adobe so that you can use them. Um, sometimes too, I suggest that you have a folder like how you have over in your um, browser over here. You have all these um, folders. You have like a desktop and a documents and a picture inside of documents, and I will actually show you this inside my documents folder. I'm going to select all these. If you go into it, you'll see that I have a fonts folder and this has any of the different fonts that I like to um, load from like defont.com, a thousand and one fonts. Whenever you download those, it's going to look exactly the same. Problem is your download, you may delete everything out of your download or things like that. And so they may not still be on your computer later on. So I always copy them over here um, and I just keep a fonts folder. I actually have um, on a jump drive as well. Every once in a while, I'll update that jump drive with all of my fonts. That way you just keep them for when you need them in the future. OK, so let's go back to. Folder. OK, so we downloaded all of those. If you need a moment, pause the video, go ahead and get them all installed so that you can use them. Then I'm going to go back to InDesign and I'm going to open this lesson six. So I'm going to come back here and go to file. Open. Lesson six. Now that little screen that we've seen in the past and I sh when it popped up earlier when I first opened this should not pop up anymore because we have already chosen the fonts that um, from that file. So these should all read. You'll also notice down here at the bottom, it says no errors. I have no errors on this because of the fact that I had already uploaded the fonts that they told me I should be using. OK, so the next thing I want you to do is I want you to come through here and choose your photographs that you're going to have on here. I did create a you don't have to stick with exactly what I'm doing. Um, I did create a folder for you that has some images in it. They're all Italian food. If you want some different images, feel free to go to websites like Unsplash, Pixabay or Pexels and um, try and find some images of your own. So I'm going to take a moment now and I'm just going to kind of go through and add these images in.
since you are adding in multiple images to a nice little shortcut to know is control D when you um, select one of your frames. If you control D, it will open up your um, place box. OK, now I have placed all my images and I got them sized and where I want them. Again, I always suggest that you kind of look down here and make sure it says no errors down here, just that you haven't um, got any little boo boos that you need to fix. Another thing I want you to notice is right here on the end of our lesson six, right at the beginning right there, you see a little star. That means we've done work on this file and we haven't recently saved it. So I always suggest that you control S just to go ahead and save every once in a while. You can come up here and do file and save. Once you do, you'll notice that little star is gone. So on this one, I, I've saved it. It's gone on the first one that I showed you that has the um, as the example. You can see that I haven't saved it in a while, so it has the little star. And again, if I just control save, then it'll go away. OK, so it's a nice little thing to have um, to keep in mind just so that you um, keep up to date on saving your stuff and you don't lose anything. Now, next I'm going to zoom over here and I'm going to change my font. So I don't really like the font that came with this for this purpose. Um, I want the title to be a little bit different. So this is going to be where um, what we talked about last time that we can go in here and kind of make changes to it. Um, if you want to use something from Defont, from 1001 fonts, from the font file I already gave you, or you can feel free to remember to go out here, back over to the Creative Cloud app, double click it, come down to Manage Fonts, Browse More Fonts, and then find a font that works for you. Okay. So whatever you think would work well for an Italian restaurant. I'm going to go with the font that we used in the last um, tutorial and it's called film. So I'm going to type in film, film o type LaSalle. I'm going to choose that one. And then I'm going to up the size of it to make it a nice. Filling size. Also, I'm going to come down here to where it says Italian restaurant. And I'm going to kind of take that over a little bit just to make it a little bit more of a design feel that it fits in the right place. So go ahead and play with the this little part of text. Take a moment, pause the video if you need to and get the text the way you want it to look. When you're done, come back on and we'll move to page two. OK, so now once you get the text on the front looking the way you want it, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to layout and next spread. This is just really nice because it's going to show me everything that's on that next spread. I can just jump down to it and I can even do fit spread into screen. There we go. So now everything's showing on this next spread. The way we're going to do this is we're going to run um, or flow text between boxes. So you can see we have these different text boxes. So I'm going to run some text between them and I've already written the text. But um, we're just going to be able to take those word documents and put it in. Now I do notice one more difference that I wanted you guys to change. So I wanted you to grab your text tool and right here instead of take time for a nice breakfast, we're going to change it to true Italian. 
and I'm going to press my cap so that I have it all in cap still. And I'm going to take time for true Italian. There we go. So we fixed it. Then we're going to start in this first box. And like I said, I've already um, typed up all the text for you. All you're going to have to do is move it in here. So you're going to select this text box and you're going to go ahead and place it, which remember you can use control D or you can go up into file in place. And I'm going to come back out to this text folder that I gave you. And it's article number one. And I'm going to go ahead and select it and open it and it's going to fill up this little box. Now you can see that the text that's in there, it's too big. There's a little red box right here. I don't want to um, use all of it. I want to save some of it. And that might be incorrect. Let me see. No, I am going to flow this one. My mistake. So with this box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flow it and I want from when you think of Italy to come over into this box. So I'm going to click this little red button right here. And that means that I have text that's outside of this box. And I'm going to bring it right up onto this one. And again, I'm going to flow this one into this box. So again, I click the red. And I put it right in here. Now you can see these lines that come across. These come in super handy so you can tell which boxes are connecting to which and kind of which order they go into. Um, when you're working on something like a magazine, sometimes it can get out of hand. Whenever we turn off um, the normal setting and we go to preview and see how the, it's going to actually look, you'll be able to tell a much bigger difference, okay? So we're going to come here and we're going to grab our text tool again and I'm going to select this first paragraph and I want this to be a main paragraph that's in this first box. So I'm going to grab my. Paragraph styles right here. And I'm going to choose body. And I'm going to kind of take it with this feel that's on these right up here, but I'm going to do. Um, body H1 gray. Now if I deselect you can see that it took all of that and it turned it into this nice kind of bolded all caps area to kind of emphasize that little area then with everything else i'm going to leave it in this type of style but i'm going to play with the sizing of it so i am going to take it up to a 13 and you can see even with 13 it's going, it's not giving me that little red box saying that anything's flowing over. And then I'm going to actually change my leading, which is the space between the lines. I'm going to change it to just 15. So I'm going to have to highlight it and change it to 15. And then I hit tab and you can see it kind of spaces it out in there for me. Okay, so next what we want to do is we want to come in here and we're going to um, put our next set of text into these two boxes and flow it in between. You can see that I left the flow on it already. Um, I had created the flow previously. That way, whenever we move it in here, it should flow straight for us and we shouldn't have to even you know, try to make it flow. So again, control D or place it and we're gonna do article two this time. And I'm going to put it right in that corner. And there it goes. It's going to flow it right in between those two boxes for me. Nice and simple. Now, again, this origins of Italian cuisine, though, I want it to actually be up in this box. So we could have flowed it from this box into this box into this box. Or in this case, I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to type it in. Double check my spelling. It does look correct. Now, one of the benefits of typing things into Word and then moving it into um, 
InDesign is that you get spell check and you can ch check your spelling and everything before you move it over. Now, how this is up here with the gray and the orange over the top, I want my headers to kind of look the same way. So what I'm going to do is um, I want Italian cuisine on the second line to be an orange. So I'm just going to put my cursor in between and click right before Italian and hit enter. Now you'll see that it makes a paragraph mark. That means that you entered it down and then Italian cuisine. Since it's already orange, I'm going to click the origins of and I'm going to come over to my body paragraph styles and I'm going to choose body H1 gray and it's just going to turn that text gray. Now I can come down in that box that I moved over and I can just delete that first line. There we go. And again, I'm going to select it all. So again, you can select, uh, click somewhere, double click, and then triple click, and it'll click everything in here. Or if I control A, it'll select everything that I flowed. And I'm going to change my text to 13. And I'm going to leave it at the 15.6 this time, just so that fills up this box a little bit better. Okay, let's do this one more time to finish out this article. The last article is going to go right in here. I am going to pull this box down just to make it a little bit larger and to fit with this image that's right next to it. And in this one, I'm going to control D and I'm going to choose article number three. Okay, so I have all my text in here and I'm going to select. Down here at the bottom, it does show that I have some overflowing text, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it and I'm going to delete all this extra text. So sometimes when you write stuff, you'll realize that you wrote a little bit too much um, or, you know, in some cases you may not have written enough once you start um, going through it. On this one, we're going to have a little combination of both. OK, so on this one, I'm going to stop and I'm going to leave this website right here. This is where I got this information from. And I'm going to select the website and I'm going to take the website of, um, down to a size nine to make it nice and small. I'm going to use my left arrow once. And hit enter and again, you'll see that little paragraph mark right here, but it's going to put that on a line all by itself. I'm going to select my text from the center. I'm going to go up to 13 and you'll see that I won't be able to leave that website on a line by itself. So I'm just going to click at the end of dish and hit delete so it comes up and adds to the end of that. Whenever it comes to InDesign, you're going to learn very quickly. There's a lot of trial and error to get it exactly the way you want it. We're going to add this Italian food culture to look like a heading just like down here, but inside the box. So I'm going to go ahead and select it all and I'm going to go ahead and do gray for, to start off. But I want Italian food. And I want culture today on the next line, so I'm going to hit enter again to change this to orange. I need to have this little paragraph mark after the first line, so if it's all one line, it'll just keep changing all of it. And as you can see, I still don't quite fit, so I could even come in here and take out this orange box and make that a little bit bigger just to make it fit. So you may have to make some adjustments. You may have to get rid of some wording. You may have to rewrite some stuff. It all depends on your client and what you're doing this for. Now up here at the top, we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to add a menu. So I'm going to scooch over a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Maybe zoom in just a tad bit. So I'm going to scooch over right here. Now I'm going to click on this first box and I'm going to control D or file and place. I'm going to do menu items and hit open. And it's going to add all these in. Then you can see the plus sign. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus sign and come over here to the next box. Boom, plus sign, next box, boom. OK, so you can still see I'm running over a little bit. We're going to have to make some adjustments, of course. But the first thing I want to do is I want to change this hot and tasty wood oven pizzas and calzones to be a header. So I'm going to select it. And again, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose one of my headings. Um, I like 
I like the H gray. Um, we're not going to be able to do the orange. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the H1 gray. But I want the letters to actually be in white. So I'm going to come up then to my text and change it to white. There we go. And I need this classic to come down just a little bit. I don't want it to overlap up there, so I'm going to make an extra little indention here. And I'm going to select all the way through Caspian and I'm going to go ahead and adjust it now. Um, I'm going to adjust the spacing between them so that I can see I have my font at 10 and my letting at nine. So I know from now on I'm going to have to do the same thing on all these other ones. So again, I'm going to select quick and healthy lunch options. I'm going to change it to my gray body. Come up here and change it to white. I'm going to delete that paragraph option. Go after the word options, hit enter. Select from Italian to Primavera. And I said 10 and I did the other one to nine to get them all to fit. Top of the third box, delete. Select beyond the ordinary breakfast. Go to my paragraph styles, change it to H1 gray. Then again, change the color to white. Go after breakfast, hit enter once. Now with this one, it sometimes gets a little tricky because you have runoff. So I always fix what I have. Um, I know some people will go back and change the size of their um, box so that they can see everything. I don't like doing that just because it throws off my spacing sometimes um, or I have to remember exactly how I had it fixed. So I usually do like half of it or a little over half of it, fix the text and then go back and um, it'll start pulling up the others. OK, so that's what it's going to look like through there. And you now have a completed. Kind of menu brochure for an Italian restaurant. Now, I'm more than happy if you want to go through and make any changes to this, if you want to play with any of the wording or if I do have any spellings, um, correct them if they're incorrect, you want to change titles, any of that stuff. Play around with this stuff, play around with the paragraph um, styles, play around with um, flowing the text, however you want to make it look, OK? So make this your own. I will come back up here though and do this real quick just to kind of show you. I'm going to fit my spread to window. Actually, I'm going to go to um, view and do actual size. So you can see the real thing. This is kind of nice. You can do um, fit page to spread to window and then you can see more of it. So there's different options up there as well. And then down here on the bottom again, we're going to switch it from normal to preview. And now you can see what your final project would look like. OK, so you're going to go up to um, file and save it, of course. But then you're also going to go to file and go to export. And under here, I want you to change this to Adobe PDF print. And hit save. It's going to pop up your options. We're just going to leave them as it is and hit export. And it does say we have some over um, set text. We didn't check that, so I'm going to cancel. And go back to page three. I'm going to come down and do it the easy way. Here's errors. And do text. Turn it down, turn it down. Remember I said you can click on the number. So it's going to show me, oh, there's a little bit of oversized text in this. And it's like one word. So I'm going to go ahead and just resize that text. I have it down to a nine right now, and I will just take it down even further. I'll take it down to an eight. And it made it fit inside that box now. So now my error is gone. So again, file and save. Then file. And export. Lesson six PDF. Save. Leave it as default. Hit export. We didn't get a pop up this time, 
So now if I come back out here, here's my PDF. And you can see your menu. Okay. If you have any questions, um, please turn this PDF into me into um, lesson six. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and we will get them answered for you.